On number seven, we're looking at a graph of y. In part A, it's asking to determine where y prime equals zero and y double prime is less than zero. So the derivative equals zero at minimums and maximums on the graph of the original function. So that would be A, C, and F. But we're also looking at only the places where the second derivative is less than zero, which means when the second derivative is negative, the graph of the function is concave down. So at point A, the graph of the function is concave up. So we would not include A in our answer. But at C and at F, the graph is concave down. So at C and F is where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is less than zero. Part B is asking for where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is greater than zero. So that would be at A because that's where one of the points where the first derivative is zero and it's on the point or the part of the graph that is concave up, which means the second derivative would be positive. On part C, it's asking where the first derivative is positive and the second derivative equals zero. The second derivative equals zero at inflection points, B and E are the inflection points here where it changes from either concave up to concave down or from concave, well, this one's also concave up to concave down. But we're looking at only the places where the first derivative is greater than zero. So we want a positive slope. So B is an inflection point that's on a part of the graph that has positive slope. E is an inflection point, and this part of the graph also has a positive slope. So B and E would be our answers. Part D is asking where the first derivative does not exist. That would be here at point D, where there's a sharp point in the graph. You can't take the derivative at a place that looks like this. So that would mean the first derivative does not exist at point B.